Hey scholars, good to be back with you. And I've gotten some questions about people who are interested in algebra. Now I gather that for some of us, algebra class was a long time ago. And maybe some of our memories of the subject aren't quite as fresh as they could be. So this is a video to kind of help you remember things you might have learned a long time ago and need to use now. As you're working on algebra, you're trying to remember algebra, you can boil it down into about five uh, individual topics. And if you know those five, you can put them together and you can get most of what you need out of them. They are variables, functions, plots, operations, and polynomials. And one leads into another. We'll use all five of those here in a few minutes. So to start, maybe the whiteboard fairy could make a list for us so we can keep track. Like that. So let's get started. Let's start with variables. Now an algebraic expression has an equal sign in it. Some stuff on the left side, some stuff on the right side. The big idea here is the stuff on the left side and the stuff on the right side have to be equal to one another. They have to be the same thing. They're just not in the same form. So if I say 3x plus 2 equals 5, well, that equals 5. That means this stuff has to equal 5. Now, where does this come from? Well, a lot of places. There's a lot of uh, places in finance and engineering and science and all kinds of things where we describe what's going on using algebraic expressions. If I were to take, let's see, this ping pong ball and kind of throw it, it's going to go pretty much in, in an arc called a parabola, which is a second order polynomial. Okay? Now it's assuming the aerodynamic drag is small and things like that. So if I do that, and it goes over and hits the wall and bounces around my little office here, hang on, I have to listen to that. The arc that thing took was a polynomial, a second order polynomial called a parabola. That's a case of physics uh, boiling down to an algebraic expression. So this could come from a lot of places, but wherever this came from, here you are. Well, all I'm going to do here is I know that side is equal to that side. And in order to solve an equation, I can go through operations right there, okay? And as long as I perform the same operation on both sides of the equation, they're still equal to each other. So I could subtract 2 from both sides. 3x equals 5 minus 2. That means 3x equals 3. Okay? So I've performed the same operation, subtracted 2 from that, subtracted 2 from that. There's what I get. Well, it's pretty obvious it's going to be 1, but let's go through it. I can now divide by both uh, side, divide both sides by 3, another operation. So I get x equals 3 over 3, and that's 1, or x equals 1. Okay? This is, I, I applied operations successively to this, and as long as I do the same thing on both sides, I get that. Right? And when you're trying to solve an algebraic equation, solving it means finding the value for that variable. There's the variable. Now, what's a variable? X is a number. We didn't know what it was. We, we're going to find it. Well, we don't know what it is yet, so we have to put something in its place to stand for, for the variable. We use X. Well, for, I don't know, historical reasons, I suppose, we tend to use letters for variable names. I guess we don't have to. I suppose we could have said 3 times smiley face plus 2 equals 5. And if we want to use that as our variable, go ahead. Use Greek letters, uh, uh, Latin letters, uh, some forms of math. Use Hebrew letters. You could use a smiley face. You could use a picture of a puppy. It doesn't matter. Just something to represent the number that you don't know yet. All right? If somebody tunes in the video right now and sees this, yeah, figure that one out. Um, <coughs> So that's what variables are for. Now, the other one is a function. A function is, we usually write these out. We see things like f of x. Well, what does f of x mean? Well, f means this is a function. We usually use f or y or things like that. Again, we use uh, letters most of the time, although I guess we don't have to. This is convenient because we communicate in writing in letters anyway. And what this is is a black box. This is an, a set of operations that have been defined. So if I say f of x is 4x plus 7, say, all right? What that means is this is called the independent variable, which means it can be whatever it wants. 
and f is my dependent variable. It doesn't get to be whatever it wants. It has to be whatever this function makes it to be. So if I put in 1 for x, I get 4 plus 7, I'm going to get 11. If I put in 2 for x, I get 4 times 2 is 8, plus 7 is 15. Okay? So all a function does is it defines a relationship between numbers and variables and call it, gives it a name. The thing that makes functions so powerful is they're general. Mathematics is all about making things general. I don't have to push 4 plus, 4x plus 7 around. Now I can just push f of x around. Okay? This, calling this, that means I can treat all functions the same way. I can treat them as a class of entities in mathematics, and that makes it more general. The more general it is, the more powerful it is. So I could say put this into uh, Excel or MathCAD or MATLAB or whatever my favorite number crunching program in, program it into my calculator, so that every time I needed this I would just push in that number x and I'd get that number back out. Okay, so that's the idea of a function. We use those a lot. Now we can push numbers around or we can draw pictures of our lists of numbers. Our brains evolved to be uh, very visual. We're very good at pattern recognition, really to the point where we tend to see patterns even where there aren't any. And every once in a while, somebody publishes a picture of a crater on the moon that looks like somebody's face or something. Well, it doesn't really. But because we are so, so evolved, so attuned to seeing patterns, to noticing patterns, um, we notice that kind of thing. So anytime we can turn a bunch of numbers and symbols into a picture, that's usually a good thing. That's where plots come in. Well, if I've got a variable, okay, uh, I can make a plot of them and I can draw two axes and it's important these axes be perpendicular to each other. That angle there has to be 90 degrees. So let's make a function here. We'll say f of x equals x squared plus 1. All right. Now I've got this function defined over here, and all I'm going to do is if I create a list of x's, I can calculate a list of y's, and then I plot x along that axis and y along this axis. This was a big, big, big deal historically, gang. This was uh, uh, Rene Descartes came up with the idea of drawing pictures of functions. And the, the, the power of it, number one, it connected algebra and geometry. But it allowed us to look at mathematics, another branch of mathematics, in terms of pictures. A lot of times we'll call this Cartesian coordinates for that reason. So if I have a list of x's and a list of, oops, sorry, not y, f of x. So a lot of times we'll call this x in that, in that direction y. You'll see that a lot, and that's just by tradition. So I go 0, 1, 2, three, four, and I can go down as far as I want. I can also go to negative numbers. There's nothing magical about positive numbers here. Well, that's going to be one. Okay, one squared plus one is going to be two. Two squared is four plus one is going to be five. Three squared plus is nine plus one is ten. Four squared, uh, 16, 17, I think, if I got that right. And so what that's going to look like, let's see, if this is zero, and let's see, one, two, three, four. Well, this, this scale is going to have to get pretty big, so let's, let's maybe do this in, uh, I don't know, let's do this in fives. Zero, five, ten, fifteen. Okay, on this scale, this is one, two, three, four. Seventeen is going to be up there. So this is going to look about like that. So this is a plot of my function. I've turned it into a picture. And we'll often work with these. If you do, if you work with, again, Excel, MATLAB, MathCAD, whatever, a lot of times you're doing plots. And so that's how you make a function real. Um, as we're going through the list here, let's talk about operations again real quick. Let's uh, maybe that. And there's actually an order of operations, and there's all kinds of mnemonics for this. When I was uh, a young whelp, 
I don't know, somebody somewhere, probably in, ele in elementary school, somewhere, one of the bajillion elementary schools I went to, um, wrote this down in this way. This is uh, parentheses. Parentheses exponents, okay, uh, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Okay, now really, these go together and these go together. One, one isn't preferred over the other one, but th this is the, the order you do things in. So when you see an equation and you work left to right, this is the order you have to do things in, or you're going to get the wrong answer. All right, let's illustrate this using a really simple polynomial. Let's say p of x, p for polynomial, is 3x. Let's say p for polynomial is 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, there's no parentheses there, but there could be. Um, first thing I'm going to do, there's no parentheses, so I don't have to worry about the exponents. That's the first thing i got to worry about. So let's say x equals 2. Okay, this is going to be 3 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 1. Now, just a uh, note there, that little dot, there's a couple of different ways to describe uh, multiplication in, in algebra. One is to use a little, little cross sign. It looks like a little bitty x. The problem is, it looks just like that x. It gets ambiguous. Now, to a mathematician, a dot product is a dot product whether you're working with a list of numbers or a scalar. So mathematicians will often use that dot. I tend to use it and my students tend to use it because it's less ambiguous. You don't mistake it for that x. If I were to write 3 times x, ugh, I guess that's a my time sign, but ugh. all right, let's, this dot is less ambiguous. So what do I do? Do I go 3 times 2 and then square and square that? No. That gets done first because of exponents. So this is 3 times 4 plus 2 times plus 2 times 2 plus 1. Okay, now multiplication and division happen just from left to right. It doesn't matter which one of those you do first. So that's 12 plus 4 plus 1. So I got that one done. Now comes addition and subtraction. Now I get, uh, let's see, 16, 17, I think, right? All right, so what I can say is P of 1 equals 17. There's your order of operations. Last thing, let's do polynomials, okay? Polynomials show up absolutely everywhere. If you've ever hit the add trend line button in Excel, you've probably done polynomials. So there's a lot of different ways to write them. Um, you've seen mx plus b as a straight line. Okay, that's where that's slope and that's the uh, y-intercept, y-axis intercept. Um, why is it mx plus b? I don't know, tradition, I suppose. You'll see this sometimes okay, when you're, when you're uh, finding roots of equations. You'll, this is a standard form for a polynomial. If you want a general form, okay, we're going to need a variable to stand for our uh, coefficients and another one to stand for x. So you'll see things like this a lot in, in the mathematical world. And this is more general. Okay, I guess. So C0 is going to be just a number. C1 is a coefficient times x. C2 is a coefficient times x squared. C3, x cubed, and so on. This is a polynomial. And the polynomial means there's one term for every possible power of x. Now this is actually c0 x to the 0 because any number, any entity to the 0 power is 1. Okay, 413 to the 0 power is 1. 10 to the 0 power is 1. i to the 0 power is 1. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, every, every entity raised to the 0 power is 1. So 2 to the 0 power is 1. 
minus 43 to the 0 power is 1. 127.230947 to the 0 power is still 1. So if you want to be strictly correct there, you could even do that. You wouldn't change the mathematical meaning. Because that's, that uh, x0 is 1, we usually leave it off. But that's, that's mathematically correct. You can do that if you want to. And any equation that's of this form is called a polynomial. And we, have, we talk about the order of the polynomial. Well, the order is just the highest number exponent. So if I were to stop right there, that would be a third order polynomial. That's a second order polynomial. And by the way, that's like ax squared plus bx plus c. That's a, that's b, that's c. Um, that is a first order polynomial, which is a straight line. And then that's a zeroth order polynomial, I guess. That's just a number. Right, so that's what polynomials are. So there you have it, gang. I've tried to review pretty much a year of junior high school algebra in a few minutes here and trying to boil it down into these uh, five topics. I hope this helps, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.